You may have a pond on your land and think that the fish are magically in there, but Marley, there's some maintenance that needs to be done to maintain the, the fish populations. Right, you need to understand a little bit about how your pond works before you go uh, purchasing something expensive that may or may not help the, uh, improve the fishing in your pond. So I'm hoping to get people oriented towards our fact sheet series. There is good information out there. There is help out there that you can get on how to manage for sustainable good fishing in most every pond. Now there, there's there's the new ponds and then there's ponds that are already in use. Let's let's talk about a pond that's that's already been you know, full of fish, it, 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 it's not a good idea to just go buy fingerlings and put them in there. There's a lot more to it. That's right. Um, most people think of fingerling stocking as step one. It's really something that most people should not be doing because these fingerlings are quite vulnerable to predation. And in most cases, you're simply feeding the bass if you stock fingerlings on top of an existing bass population. So please don't do that unless you're told to do so by a fisheries biologist. <laughs> There are several ways to go at managing a fish population in a, in a pond, but you're absolutely right. You have to know what's there. If you don't know what's in your pond, you may have some troublemaker species that, that are really going to prevent uh, good fishing and good, the development of good-sized catchable fish. Fish like bullheads, mm -hmm. uh, also known as mudcats. Uh, hardly anybody likes those fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're, I have no problem educating people about the undesirability of those fish, but there are some other fish that people kind of like mm -hmm. that I call spoilers, mm -hmm. like the green sunfish. Okay. C good to catch, good to eat, but they outcompete the bass and the, when they're small and the bluegill for insects, and they predominate the pond, they get overpopulated and stunted. Green sunfish are not a good fish to have in your pond. The second fish that's even harder to convince people not to stock are crappie. Mm -hmm. Crappie are flavorful, fun to catch, everybody loves crappie. They don't work in ponds because they have a tendency to explosively reproduce. You get lots and lots of stunted small crappie when they run out of food and they can quickly run a pond out of food through their over reproduction. Marley, we're coming out of a drought. A lot of producers had fish and then in their ponds and then the water went away. What, what should producers be thinking about if they want to reinstate a pond and fish? If you've truly lost all the fish in your pond, you're 100% sure that there's no fish left in your pond, then you can probably consider stocking some fingerlings back in your pond. And I would recommend uh, for most people uh, in Oklahoma that they would stock first some bluegill mm -hmm. and channel catfish fingerlings, wait several months, uh, and follow up with a stocking of largemouth bass fingerlings after the other the bluegill have had a chance to begin establishing themselves because they're the forage base, they're the food for those largemouth bass. But a lot of people have an existing population of fish. How do people know how many fish are in there? It's a matter of your, uh, your catch record, right. having a sense. And, and if you were a dedicated person who wanted to manage intensively and do the very best job possible, you would actually keep a record book, a fishing log. Every time you go fishing, you would measure the fish for their length, make a note about whether they're skinny or well-fed, and also how many minutes or, it, or whatever time it was that you took, for, to, uh, how many fish you caught per hour mm -hmm. while you were doing that. If you've got that kind of information, that's a treasure trove of information that you could sit down with a fisheries biologist and after they had fainted because they'd never seen this before, uh, they would probably uh, recover and be able to give you a pretty accurate uh, diagnosis of what's going on in your pond mm -hmm. and uh, what perhaps you need to harvest more of or less of and just how to uh, manage for better fishing or sustained good fishing in that particular pond. Well, Marley, I tell you what, you, you guys have a lot of information on the web, uh, fact sheets, a uh, lot of other great information too. And we have a link to that on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.